our streets. Just over a week ago now, four officers murdered a man by the name of George Floyd. The murder was the latest example of deep systemic inequities that have pervaded our society through the entire history of our country, from slavery to today. These injustices have existed for centuries in American policing and the criminal justice system. Systemic racism is existing in every facet of our society. Wealth disparity, lack of access to health care, lack of access to affordable housing or to real job opportunities. Economic justice to health care justice. Much of it has been denied to so many. People have been gathering in our streets in Seattle and across this country to demand change, to demand justice, and to demand that the promise of America, the promise of America, not be just a promise for the privileged few, but be a promise for all. Too many in America and in Seattle are tired of words and promises. We must make real and durable change. In committing to those changes, we must admit and acknowledge the deep deep systematic racial barriers are real and affect, as I said, every system in our society. For the denial of truth, the denial of truth is the lifeblood and the oxygen for, that injustice needs to continue. And when we commit to these changes, we must also commit to centering the voices and the experiences of the communities that have been locked out and left behind for generations in almost every aspect of our lives. From economic justice, to civil justice, to criminal justice, to even our very life expectations. For in the end, the demands of these protesters must be our demands. They must be our collective demands. For the great experiment that is America, for it to work, the rights to life, liberty, and happiness must belong to all. Not granted by or just given over to the privileged few. Talk a little bit about what happened last night. Yesterday, beginning at an early afternoon, we had probably 7,000 people gathering and marching in downtown Seattle. Beginning downtown, they marched for hours to City Hall, to Westlake Mall, to Capitol Hill. They spoke their truths and grief for the murder of Mr. Floyd and their own common trauma. Mostly bike police accompanying the march. Over miles and for hours, there were no confrontations. I thank those demonstrators and I thank them in person today for their work to march peacefully, to protest what needs to be protested and to raise their voices for a better path for justice. Last night the demonstrations continued around parts of the city including First Hill and Capitol Hill. As I said, the speaker spoke forcefully about the changes that need to happen. We saw SPD officers kneeling in solidarity with protesters. We saw police and protesters shaking hands. In fact, at 8.15 p.m. around then, a friend from New Jersey of mine who I worked on police reform years ago texted me to tell me that he was watching Seattle and had given him hope that we could get through this and still build a better America that there could be a way forward through the pain and chaos to a more improved city and system. And then later that night, in the span of just seconds, things changed quickly. And while I'll let Chief Best address and speak to the situation on Capitol Hill, I do want to say a few things. First, as the Chief has said multiple times, and I agree, and based on my experience, no, that the use of force must be rare, it must be necessary, and it must be proportional. Our police department has worked so hard to ingrain those principles, not just in their policies and in their training, but in 
everyday contact with the residents of our city. I saw the videos that many saw and was concerned that things had escalated and changed so rapidly. I talked to Chief Bess <clears throat> and understand that it was a highly charged and very fluid situation. But we have come too far in this city on police reform and we cannot shirk from an honest and transparent criticism or review of any police actions. And I've spoken with both the Office of Police Accountability and the Office of Inspector General who will each independently review and investigate SPD's handling of events yesterday. OPA, of course, looks at individual actions, but OIG looks at systems, and the Office of Inspector General has been observing and part of looking at what's happened over the last four days in real time to set up and determine how to review how we respond to large events like this. I welcome that independent review I also assured the Office of Inspector General and the Office of Police Accountability that if they needed additional resources during this period of time to handle the increased numbers of complaints or to do a more thorough review, that I would make sure as mayor that they had the resources they needed to do so. It is a tough budget season, but we want to make sure that the public and the people protesting in the street and the residents and businesses of Seattle know that we will not shirk away from our obligation and commitment to the continuous improvement. And Chief Best has stood with me every step of the way on that and wants to make sure that we have those reviews in place. Ultimately, ultimately, we know that every interaction the public has with a police officer either adds to or takes away from public trust. It either adds to or takes away from credibility. And I've heard that from so many officers in the last four days who know that the actions of the officers in Minnesota have raised questions raging across America that, dis that has diminished trust in every police officer. And they know that they've got to win that trust back, not just through words, but through actions. If we had needed any greater proof that the acts of individual officers didn't diminish or undermine public confidence, we only need to look at being here today and what's happening all across America. That the actions of four officers in Minneapolis, Minnesota have set off this flame in cities all across our country. I want people to be able to peacefully gather to be able to demand change, express grief, experience community with one another. But we need them to do it peacefully. We will do all we can to protect the cherished right to assemble and express First Amendment rights, but we will also make sure that we maintain public safety, protect people, and protect the public safety of every community. Chief Best and I have had so many conversations over the years, and we know and agree and reaffirm that every encounter of police, they use and try to determine how to de-escalate as a first stop. The use of any force, whether it be the use of hands-on force or pepper spray or tear gas, should only be done as circumstances required. And every officer needs to lead with grace and restraint. And I was so, uh, like many people, given hope when I saw the two officers at East Precinct take a knee and talk to protesters and share their common humanity. SPD will also be looking at seeing what operational changes they need to make in crowd management to determine a better way to go forward and to keep officers safe, community safe, and protesters safe. We know that these demonstrations are continuing not just in Seattle but across the country. And it is a highly charged and very fluid situation. Saturday, I think, reflected the highest degree of difficulty and no one wants to go back there. But we also have to find a way forward that people feel that they have the right to protest and police know that they can be with people who are peacefully protesting and not use force. It's not just important for us to ensure that there's accountability in the short term. We must also ensure that it works towards in weeks and months to come 
and processes we put in place have to include community input. I was able to meet with some of the protesters today who want their voice at the table talking about the changes they think need to be made. The chief and I will continue to meet with them, to listen to them, and to include others in the community so many are at the table, including members of the Community Police Commission who have that very special role in our community. Over the last few days, I've heard many, many, many in the community expressing a number of issues. Some of those we want to make sure that we can take off the table immediately. For example, many have expressed concern about the mourning badges and we've talked about the importance to police officers in acknowledging the loss of an officer. But the public wants apparently to know this badge number um, even if the name is present. So Chief Best and I have discussed it and we will change the policy at Seattle Police Department so officers can wear mourning badges, but there is a way that a badge number is always displayed. That won't happen overnight, but it is a change we will make. We also know that there's a shift in sentiment related to body-worn video. Many people who are on the streets don't understand why the body-worn video hasn't been turned on. Um, many, uh, many who have been around this a while may remember that this decision came before I was mayor in discussions with the ACLU and the city council and the mayor at the time that out of concerns for civil rights they did not want to have peaceful demonstrations recorded. I am going to ask the city council and the community police commission to reconsider that policy to speak with the ACLU and listen to community to determine whether body-worn video should be activated at all times and whether there's other things we can do to protect civil liberties. For example, we could have a rule that said that any video of a lawful gathering or, or people protesting could be utilized only for very limited circumstances. For example, if there was a complaint against a police officer for OPA or if there was a criminal investigation for other regards. We want to limit the ability. I don't know what those are, but I think that issue should be revisited, and I'm going to ask the City Council, then the CPC and the ACLU, who had reached the agreement to have that prohibition and restriction, to look at whether we should have a different policy going forward. As I've mentioned over the last few days, the morning badges were used to recognize fallen officers. And it is the policy of the Seattle Police Department that every officer dis displays their name. Um, I, I have asked, and there's no circumstance or a case that we're aware of where an officer it was the target of the complaint when they knew their name, they couldn't find the officer. But it's a matter of public confidence. People believed it was done for a different purpose, and it's an easy thing for us to change, and so we will. We want to respect the honor that police officers give to those who lose their life in the line of duty, but we understand that the public wants to have the badge number and the name. We're going to find a way to get that done. I also want to be clear that I know that when I say that the Seattle Police Department has made great progress and reforms, it's true. But saying that doesn't mean that we're done. I investigated the police department almost 10 years ago and signed the consent decree and understand the challenges that have been involved. But I also will state again, the gains they have made are real. But just because we have made real gains does not mean we are finished. No one is more certain about that than Chief Carmen Best. She believes in and demands a culture of continuous improvement when she sees officers, policies, or procedures that she believes are contrary to the community good, she is the first person to demand change. We have to make sure that acknowledging progress, that people also don't hear, that that denies the truth that communities have felt for generations, or the truth about the racial injustice in policing and the criminal justice system. We know that the promise of America has not been made real for all Americans. That is the sol solemn obligation of all of us to make that more real. <clears throat> so
So while we can show you that under the consent decree through policies and training and embedding the ability for crisis management has made a difference on the street and the number of people who have been helped because of it, we also hear the deep concerns and we will listen to those concerns. The work for reform always continues. I have been involved in police and criminal justice reform for almost 40 years and you never get to a final destination because the reality on the street changes, our nation evolves, and we must sure, make sure that the systems evolve to actually be part of a system of justice. When I met with some African American leaders earlier this week, uh, one of the ministers I talked to said that when he saw the death of Mr. Floyd and the four officers who were involved, it reminded him of the American systems. There was one system that intentionally killed Mr. Floyd, two who held him down, and another who just turned away. We have to change that. We have to change it in our hearts, in our attitudes, in our actions, in our systems. So what happens next? First, I want to be clear that it is existing policy in the Seattle Police Department and will continue to be policy that any allegation of misconduct will be investigated by a civilian-led, independent Office of Police Accountability. The Office of Police Accountability has received over 12,000 complaints so far since the beginning of these protests. Our system, our accountability system, both OPA and OIG, will be tested and there could never be a more important moment that they have the resources and confidence of the public. So as I said, we will make sure that in the budget that OPA and OIG have the resources they need to do the job they need to do to give the public the confidence that the oversight is there. Second, the Office Inspector General plays a really critical role in recommending systemic changes OPA looks at individual actions, and OIG, Office Inspector General, looks at systemic changes. It's an incredibly important thing on an ongoing basis. In many ways, the Office of Inspector General is stepping into the shoes that the court monitor has played to be a watchdog, to investigate, to audit, to make sure that the systems are functioning like they should. And if there needs we are reaching the six o'clock hour. We want to assure our viewers that we're still watching this press conference happening right now, and you can watch it at king5.com uh, as the mayor continues to speak as well as the police chief. Interesting, uh, Jessica, the mayor laying out a uh, clear direction for what she is uh, hoping to accomplish in the days to come and uh, really restating this uh, fact that every police interaction with the public, she said, adds to or takes away from public trust and reaffirming that the Office of Police Accountability will have full funding to be able to investigate some 12,000 allegations of misconduct. We're keeping, keeping tabs on all of this for you right here on King 5. More local news back here at 630.